Hi, I'm Mike from Creative in Guernsey. We run a lot of photography courses and the question we get asked most is, which lens shall I buy? Now the answer generally is, what do you like to photograph? What we're going to do today is we're going to show you a range of lenses, everything from a fisheye lens right up to this monstrous 400mm f2.8 lens. I'm going to show you the different effects they have when they're used. Now there are some differences between the cheaper and more expensive lenses. Generally speaking, the more expensive lenses have better quality glass in them, which helps with the contrast and the saturation of your pictures. Another thing to remember with lenses is, when they come with a lens hood, this piece of equipment here, always keep that on when you're shooting. What this does is it'll save it if you do happen to knock your lens, but also the light travels in straight lines. So the light comes in here to the lens and straight through to the sensor. Now, without the lens hood on, Light comes in from all different angles, bounces around inside, and your picture's not as, as crisp and as saturated, and the contrast often isn't as good. Now, the two things that affect depth of field are the length of the lens and the aperture. Now, with a wide angle lens, as I'm going to show you, you'll get a very long depth of field, so a lot of the picture will be in focus. Certain things, if you use your camera phone, for example, you'll get a huge depth of field. When using lenses like this, you'll get a very, very shallow depth of field. This is 400 millimeters long, and it's got an aperture of f2.8. And what that means is the F on the aperture. If, for example, you have, this is a 400 millimeter lens, and let's say we use it at F4, what it means is that the F is the focal length and it's divided by four. So the whole through the middle of the lens, the aperture will be 400 millimeters divided by four, which is 100 millimeters wide, quite a large aperture. Now I'm gonna take some pictures of Eden, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna stand the same distance apart and all I'm going to do is change lenses so you can see the different effects the different lenses have on the picture of Eden. The first lens we're going to use is the fisheye. This is a Nikon, it's a 16mm f2.8 and these give a very exaggerated wide angle field of view and it's going to make Eden look a lot further away than she actually is. I'm using all of the lenses on this test today at their maximum aperture. The extreme wide angle of this fisheye makes anything at the edges of the frame appear to bend. The next lens we're going to use is the 14 to 24 mm Now this is very useful. Again, it's still a super wide angle lens. It's good for landscape and architecture, and it's got a maximum aperture of f2.8, so quite a wide aperture. Even at f2.8, this lens still shows a lot of the background in focus. At 14 and 24 mm you can clearly still see where Eden is. Next up is the 50mm f1.4. That's a big hole through the middle of this lens. It's great for low light situations and also if you're close to your subject, it can throw the background out of focus nicely. Also with the 50mm, the distance between myself and Eden is about what we see with the human eye. These lenses are very popular as they are inexpensive for the relatively large aperture. You can see the background is looking more out of focus now. Next up is the 85mm. Again, this is a fixed focal length lens. It's called a telephoto. Any lens longer than around 50 millimetres, when you take a photo, your subject will appear closer to you, so it seems a telephoto. It's also great for portraits, because again, it throws the background out with its maximum aperture of f1.8. Now we're seeing the background start to get a lot less distracting than it was with the wide angle lenses we used earlier. Next is the 70 to 200. This is one of my favourite lenses. It's got a maximum aperture of f2.8. Now the 200 end of it is one I use quite a lot. So you can stand quite far away from your subject and if you're photographing someone for the first time or maybe they're not that confident being photographed, you're not sort of too in their face. You can stand quite far back and get a nice close-up portrait. The next lens we're going to show you is a 200mm fixed focal length lens. This is a monster. It's a 200mm f2. So a maximum aperture of f2, which means at 200mm, the aperture through the middle will be 100mm, which is massive. It'll let a lot of light in, and also with a big telephoto effect, it'll throw the background out nicely. Now you can't make out what the background is. Compared with the 70 to 200 2.8 at 200mm, there isn't much in it. Probably not two and a half times the price of a difference. The next lens we're going to use is this monster 400mm 2.8. And this was lent to me by my good friend Andrew Lepedvin, who uses it mainly for sports photography. You wouldn't normally use these for portraits because they're a bit unwieldy. Normally you'd use a tripod, you wouldn't hand hold them. But again, I'm going to show you what effect we're going to get with a very, very long lens. We've also got a times 2 converter for this to make an 800mm lens. And we're going to show you how it looks at the very, very long end. We are now very close in with the 400mm. And with the x2 converter, there's hardly any room for the background. 
I'm going to take a full length shot with the lens at 800mm. See how far Eden has to walk down the high street for us to get her at full length? Now for a bit of fun I'm going to put the fisheye lens back on. Now you can't even see Eden with the perspective this lens gives. Let's do a quick comparison test. We use our least expensive telephoto, the 85mm f1.8. You can see it does a great job, the background's nice and out of focus. Next we're going to put the 400mm on and you can see a huge difference. Mind you this lens is 30 times more expensive than the 85mm. Can you tell what time of year it is? Now great tip for out of focus backgrounds. We're going to stay the same distance from the tree and get Eden to move closer to us. See how in focus the tree looks? Now she moves a bit closer to me and the tree is much more out of focus. And finally she comes as close as she can go and it's much better, the tree is much more out of focus. We're going to do the same with this church door. Close to it and everything is in focus, further towards us and it's better and finally very close. We've been using this tip to take portraits of Eden but you can use it for anything. Just remember the distance to your subject and onto your background are all important. Thanks very much for watching. You can see more of our videos on our YouTube channel, Creative Photography Courses.